Welcome to another edition of Talking Germany, the show where we do just that. And our guest today is a man who's known as the godfather of skateboarding here in Germany. He's credited with bringing this sport, if that's what it is, to Germany. And I have to say, he's made a fair bit of money out of doing so. So here is the man himself, Titus Dittmann. Hi, Titus. Hello. Hi. Titus, in my introduction there, I said that uh, skateboarding is a sport, but it's really much more than that, isn't it? There are sports elements, of course, but there's a lot more to it. Skateboarding is an ideal blend of commitment, desire for creativity, and strong willpower, at least where conquering urban spaces is concerned. Every time a watchman sends you away, you have to climb the wall again, and mastering a new trick requires a lot of skill. So besides the sports aspect, there are other things involved. It's a way for teenagers to express themselves and find their own identity and meaning. You could say the most meaningful thing on earth. Identification to find, sinn to find, also, eigentlich das Sinnvollste, was es auf dieser Erde gibt. So, when I listen to you, Titus, is it only for young people? Is it only for kids, or can people like me join in? It is erwachsenen untauglich, ziemlich erwachsenen untauglich. It's not really suitable for adults. That's because of the high physical demands and extreme amount of motor skills involved. On the other hand, that means youngsters can use skateboarding as a means of expression. Adults don't find it as easy to take over as inline skating, which also started out as an activity for young people, but was taken over by adults. From day one, skateboarding has been a means of expression for youngsters and still hasn't been taken over by adults. Von den Erwachsenen adaptiert worden. Dieter Stittmann, uh, skateboard businessman, skateboard historian. When, when was the first skateboard invented? Uh, definitely in California. Uh, also, <laughs> definitely in California. The whole California. scene definitely started um, in California. I really didn't know much about it to start with because I was studying phys ed in Germany and everything I heard about skateboarding in the media portrayed it as kid stuff. And when you're a serious phys ed student who is already 30 years old, you can't go skateboarding. But when I first saw skateboarders in Münster, it immediately became clear to me how powerful it was. What a great teaching tool it was, one which could be used in schools. My career as a teacher was ahead of me, and so I decided to grab a skateboard and give it a try. And I caught the bug straight away. Let's, we've, got, we've got some pictures now from, from that period. This is, we're talking about, I think, 1977, 78, perhaps. Titus, yeah. just show, show us this, this, this archive material. What can we see? Here you have a young teacher who's trying to learn how to handle a skateboard. And there are my pupils watching me. My degree thesis was about skateboarding, and I investigated to what extent skateboarding is suited as a sport in schools. I came to some great conclusions. I had to explain how to use my teaching skills to get them to enjoy skateboarding, and then I devised some skateboard basketball rules, skateboard soccer rules, everything I needed for my thesis, but which is of no use in real life. It was an interesting period. Here he goes, here he goes. <laughs> and I still do get mad if things don't work out. So at, at that time you then went off to California and you collected, you, you went to buy equipment and bring it back to Germany and start your business. I had a bunch of students and the skateboarding boom was over in Germany. You couldn't buy skateboards anymore. So I flew to California. I spoke no English and I bought small numbers of skateboards straight from the manufacturers and I smuggled them into Germany to avoid having to pay tax on them. I felt okay about it because it was for my pupils and I sold the boards to them at the factory price. 
Naturally, word got around, and I got more and more involved in what was left of the skateboarding scene. In the early 80s, I started publishing magazines. The skateboarders asked me to organize contests, and suddenly Münster was at the center of the international skateboarding scene. Let me ask you, this was all very sort of grassroots stuff that you were doing there. You then, in here in Germany, you commercialized a subculture. Is that a problem? It was a problem to start with, because it was new, and I had to cope with existing structures and set ways of thinking. There was a lot of opposition. I had to explain the purpose behind it, and although I was willing to work with the city of Münster, it wasn't easy to get help when you first had to explain why you wanted it. No one had heard of skateboarding. Irgendwie Hilfe zu bekommen, wenn man erst mal erklären muss, wofür man die Hilfe will, weil yeah, Skateboarden but, kannte keiner. But let me just say, what I want to know is, is it cool to make money out of skateboarding? Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, I had um, huge problems with it at the beginning. Uh, uh, I finished high school in 1968, and I was shaped and socialized by that era. To start with, I always denied being an entrepreneur. I gave up my secure teaching job in 1984 in order to earn a living from skateboarding. It took a long time for me to admit that I was actually a businessman. It had its advantages, but I still feel the need to do a lot for the skateboarding scene due to the socialization I went through. Titus, we'll talk about that in just a second. Let me give me a figure. I want to know. You you were a teacher. Yeah? yeah, we're going to talk about the German education system yeah. now. Give me a, a grade for the German education system. One is poor, very poor. Ten is good. Where is the German education system? Um, das, das that depends on how you relatively... relatively... Quick answer, quick answer. <laughs> <laughs> then, <laughs> then I didn't understand the question. Uh, uh, Titus, what I want you to do is to tell me, you were a teacher, yeah? yeah? Give me a grade, give me a nauta, yeah, for ah, okay. the German education system. Ah, okay. One is bad, ten is good. What does the German education system get? Uh, between two and three. Oh, rock bottom. We're going to talk about it in just a second. One complaint that many observers from national and international organizations have about the German education system is that kids from well-off families with well-qualified parents tend to do just fine. But many kids who don't have the background like that tend to struggle at best. We have this report. Social differences aren't really noticeable at kindergarten age. They become evident when kids start school. For example, when parents fail to provide school supplies because they simply don't know what a binder is or don't know how to obtain an internship. Kids from poor families are often at a disadvantage. These families are faced with a dilemma. They know that school is important, but they don't have the resources to be able to give their kids much help. A children's charity organization says low-income or uneducated families require additional assistance. It also criticizes some German states for sorting kids into academic and vocational streams when they're still too young. Late developers lose out in the process. Germany's education system benefits kids from educated backgrounds. Six times as many kids from families with academic qualifications pass their high school examinations than families without academic degrees. Three million children in Germany are officially classified as poor, and if they aren't given the opportunity to get a good education, they'll remain poor. Well, it's interesting because we've just had a report that is very damning about the German education system, at least in one respect. But Titus, he wanted to change his grade that he gave the system. He misunderstood the question. Titus would give the German education system a seven or an eight. You think the German education system is pretty good? Yeah. I think it's in the middle. Uh, it's in the middle. It's it's in the middle. It depends. Uh, if I look at excellent European systems, I find it hard to judge. On the other hand, if I visit developing countries and Afghanistan, I realize that we have an excellent education system. It's always relative. But it's too rigid. After my first day at school as a teacher, I said to my wife, either I'll be the downfall of the school or it will be the downfall of me. Flexibility. Quick changes aren't possible. That's the German school system's greatest weakness. 
des deutschen Schulsystems. And also, it depends who your parents are. That's what we learned from this report. If your parents are well off, you do okay at school. If your parents are not well off, you have problems. Uh, yeah, yes, that's, that's correct. Uh, But you can work on making it better, and you want to. And uh, in the, tell me about the skateboarding scene. Is that uh, uh, do you have a lot of kids in the skateboarding scene who are not doing so well at school, who are looking, who are outsiders, who are looking for a new identity, or are there lots of well-off kids? What kind of kids are there? The special thing about skateboarding is it brings people together from all backgrounds. When young people go skateboarding, that's all they're thinking about. The color of your skin, different ways of thinking, different religious beliefs just don't matter. Skateboarding brings people together. Unterschiedliche Religionen, diese Unterschiede, die sonst so gemacht werden, das fällt alles zurück, das Skateboarden vereint. Okay, skateboarding vereint. It is, skateboarding brings people together. Let's go to Afghanistan now. Und bin dann mit den Skateboards mit dem Oliver Then I took the skateboards to the orphanages with Oliver. We gave lessons, and that's what made me decide to start up a foundation called Skate Aid. Eine Stiftung zu gründen, die heißt Skate Aid. <laughs> the foundation supports projects and organizations worldwide that use the skateboard as a tool to make the world a better place, be it in Afghanistan or Africa. We also have great projects in Tanzania and South Africa. Every little bit helps. Okay, and Titus, you're not just doing this humanitarian stuff. You've got your business. How many people work for your business? Give me a number. Uh, about about 100, 150. 150. Okay, and what is the average age of those people? Can you tell me? Have you got any idea uh, at all? 25 to 30. Ooh, pretty young. <laughs> so, Titus, uh, how old are the people who apply for jobs with your company? It varies a great deal, but it's mostly young people who apply because skateboarding appeals mainly to young people. On the other hand, we have a lot of older staff members, and I don't think age is that important. People don't form social groups according to age like they used to. People have changed their way of thinking. I look for people that share my ideals and my interests. Take rock concerts. You'll find a 19-year-old beside a 50-year-old, and they get along just fine. Music has brought them together, just like skateboarding brings together different generations. Even if skateboards aren't suitable for adults, there are grown-ups who went skateboarding when they were younger and who carry carried it over into adult life. This common interest allows skateboarders to get along no matter what their age is. So for me, age doesn't play a major role. It's more about what makes you tick. But let's, let's be concrete about this. You do interviews with people who would yeah. like to work for your company. Yeah. What does an, uh, somebody who's, let's say, over 50, What does that person have to have so that you say, I want this guy or I want this woman? I hired a manager just a year ago. He's 57 and my future, so to speak. Uh -huh. And why? Because experience counts. It's good if someone has grown up in the business. It's all about know-how, what you can do, not how old you are. If someone has been in the business for decades and has a good nose for it and his attitude suits this youth culture, then he's my perfect candidate. Okay, and let's talk about you, Titus. What's a, what do you have now that you didn't have when you were in your 20s or in your 40s or whenever? I've become more compassionate and not so hot-headed. Those are advantages, I've noticed. I notice it a lot because I spend a lot of time with my son. When we go car racing, if it's about getting around the course fastest, my son wins. But if it's a 24-hour race, then I can use the advantage of age to keep up with him. And tell me about this. You, you've, you've told me that I'm going to have problems getting on a skateboard and actually skating. But let's say I could. Would I be accepted as the guy I am in the skating scene? Would they accept me? 
Also, um, well, credibility plays an important role. An, the way you behave also, and the way you dress should reflect your personality. So geben, a bank manager so wears a suit and tie to portray an air of seriousness. Clothing is a means of expression. A skateboarder has something to put across, too. If it really comes from the heart, then it's okay, and age doesn't really matter. Übereinstimmt, dann uh, ist das okay, dann spielt das Alter dann nicht so eine große Rolle. What you're saying, Titus, is that if you go down to the skating, whatever, the skating area, dressed like that, people are going to accept you. And if I go down dressed like that, they're not going to accept exactly. me. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you're a hard man. We've got some more video for you. Uh, Titus is a fearless sort of a guy. We're going to have a look at something really crazy now. Strap yourself into your seats. Watch this. <laughs> Titus, what's this? <laughs> I take my passion for skateboarding with me into my next passion, parachuting. And while we're on the subject of age, I find it really great because I still know all the tricks you use in the halfpipe and so on, and I can do things in the air where I think I'd hurt myself on the ground because I'm not so good at taking a fall. I can do all that, and before I hit the ground, I can open my parachute and land safely. So it's a great combination, sort of skateboarding for old men. And you've got, you've got the skateboard on your feet there. There yeah. it is. Da, I've developed a binding you can release a few meters before you hit the ground. The first jump was full of adrenaline. If you hold your feet at an angle, you lie on your back, and then you rotate like a propeller, and then you have to stay calm and get a grip on your body and do everything correctly. Titus likes fear, Titus likes speed. Let's do our traditional quiz very quickly. Skateboarding is dangerous or safe? Safe. Safe. I thought you were going to say dangerous. A good skater, a good skater is an athlete or a daredevil? It's an athlete. And that's interesting. It's a safe sport for athletes. Uh, here's one. You're, you are Eberhard or Titus? I'm Titus Eberhard. <laughs> Titus is my first name. Uh, Eberhard is my second name and Dittmann is my la last name. And you changed your name to Titus officially? N yeah? No, I changed name. Ich wechselte nicht, sondern ich hatte, also mein Bruder hat That's what my brother called me in kindergarten. My parents, my brother and my teachers all called me Titus, since I was four or five. So for me, Titus is my real name. I studied in Münster and Titus was on my certificates, but I had to get the name on my passport changed to Titus before I was allowed to take my exams. Titus Dittmann, I told you he's unstoppable, he's inspirational, he's a very interesting guy. I hope you've enjoyed his company as much as I have. And if you have, come back next week. Tschüss.